here we are once again. Uh, this is the third installation of our video. We've done two before. We did one on sound isolation. We did uh, the first one on sound treatment. And here we are circling back, talking about sound treatment. And uh, you guys were so gracious to take all the dimensions of my studio space where I have drums, I track percussion, I track vocals, uh, just has opened up the possibilities. And so we're gonna get into that. What you guys have done to my room, uh, Anthony Gramani from Sonatus. I've been practicing that for a while. Yeah, you got it, you got, got it. The, got the name down. Yeah. Uh, so in a nutshell, I had uh, a little bit of room treatment like people do. Uh, a foam thing here, a blanket there, uh, trying to control the room. Uh, so when you guys talked about all the science behind uh, diffusers and absorbers and all these different kinds of things, it gave uh, me a chance to kind of experiment or it, it, it gave me a chance to consider what potential this room had. And it should be known to our listeners what the dimensions, roughly eight foot high ceilings, right. 14 inch, uh, 14 foot length, 11 foot width. There's other aspects of this as well, but that in a nutshell, to give you an idea of what kind of room was treated, and we're, we're gonna include videos and audio examples in this video today so that you can really hear the difference. Uh, this is a almost typical bedroom size room. And so it's a great opportunity to show what people can do in their home studio with a lot of the space, spatial dimensions that most of us are dealing with. Right, right. So you, what, what you're in is a, a room that's a little bit bigger than the kid's bedroom about the size of a typical what uh you know a, the main bedroom of a house used to be called a master bedroom now we're calling it the owner's suite um uh. and uh, and actually i i have to say so we'll we'll get back to this but you sent me a recording that showed what the room sounded like before you treated it and then what the room sounded like after you treated you know kept everything the same just put up the the materials and I, I was like, wow, check it out. I mean, you're a great drummer. You got great you, drums. Man. You play well. But you're very, you know, raw recording, just straight, you know, mics right into into the board, if I can call it that way. Yeah. There ain't no board anymore, but I still like saying that. Um, sounded like something you'd get in a really expensive studio, yet it was a, a room that's the size of a bedroom with proper acoustical retrofit. So that was really... Uh, uh that was really fun it was actually fun to to experience that and see yeah wow that that actually worked really well if anyone wants to know kind of the a little bit of the technical aspects it, it uh, as briefly as i can say i'm uni using an uh universal audio interface and there's some active mic pre's that i'll use a little bit of compression or something uh to go through the interface into i use logic i turned all that stuff off so what you're going to hear is the microphone straight into the DAW with no, no effects, uh, same drums, same cymbals, same drummer, uh, you know, it, uh, same track. Uh, I think the after has my friend who walked in with my phone and walked around, but the audio is from the recording. I just married the video with the audio. So you're not hearing that from the phone. You're actually hearing the same track, the same performance, or, or, or uh, the same song, the same parts. Mm -hmm. uh, everything being the same. And then the last thing I, I decided to do was not mix anything. So 10 tracks, all the drums, all the room mics, 10 tracks at Unity, at zero. So it's there's no mixing involved, so you get a, an apples to apples comparison right. of the room.
can I read a couple of these things that we've gotten social sure. media responses? Sure. Love okay, to, love to hear that. Yeah, here here's some things. Uh, room sounds great. Sounds great, man. I'm sure you're saving time mixing on the back end as well. Right. Quite a difference. Kit sounds super fat. Wow, what a difference. Sounds fantastic. And then somebody wrote more of this. <laughs> more of this. I, I don't know what that means. But uh, and then people are asking now, they're asking, tell me about the room dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then also, why did they place? Uh, what were their plans involved in the placement of this of the different materials? Uh, if so, why and what for? And it's like, great question. We're answering that now. The episode will be out next week. So people want to know, why is there a diffuser right there? Right why there. is yeah? Why is there uh, you know uh, uh, absorber there? Uh, so a couple of questions like that, uh, and cool. I know you have pictures of what the engineers put together for this room. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me actually share the screen, and um, this is uh, the plan we created based on the dimensions you sent us. You said, you know, I got a room. It's this. this. You sent you sent us a round of pictures going all the way around. You told us where the door was. You told us well both doors and uh, where you wanted to put your drums and then we did the engineering work it takes to figure out like you know how's sound bouncing around here it's coming off your drums and hitting all these different service surfaces we have all these modeling tools that allow to simulate on computers what what the room does a process called oralization you can just build a, a, a synthetic ver version of the room and listen with with earphones and binaural what it's going to do and we've got certain recipes we just you know we go given a room like this you need about this much absorption and diffusion and we usually like to place them this way and that way for reasons i will really i won't really explain completely because i think we spent like an hour going over that but i'll, I'll just quickly uh, go through them um and then we we can actually try that we can actually put uh, various materials in various places in the room and and energize from the middle of the room where your drum kit is and just go, well, is that going to work? And and the oralization, as it's known, is pretty accurate. Um, now, to be totally, completely fair, the way the ear and brain of a human being hears is so complex and nonlinear that it's that you can't actually just completely simulate what's going to happen. You know, you, you, you know, from hearing a, hearing a drum kit in a room and then sticking the microphone and listening to that, it's like, man, it's completely different because, because it is a microphone does not have any of the funny processing that goes on in the brain. It's just like raw. Um, by the way, if you want to hear what the microphone is going to do, really quick thing to do is you, you plug one ear and you listen this way to what's coming off and you'd be amazed how completely different it is when it goes directly into your canal without your two ears. That's a great so, trick, man. Yeah. Uh, so what's called in, in psychoacoustics, the study, study of acoustics, a binaural hearing, the, the fact that we have these two ears that even though we can't move them like dogs can, our brain's kind of trying to go, where is it? Where is it? What's it going? Trying to remove reflections and cancellations of echoes and stuff to, to listen to the sound. And that's why a sound is a lot drier and cleaner when you just listen to it than when you pick it up on a mic. But if you kill the binaural hearing by plugging one or the other ear, whichever ear you have that's less shot, um, then you, you get back to hearing more like what a microphone does. It's not exactly the same, but you, you, you can then kind of walk around a drum and you can go, how does it sound here? How does it sound there? And stick a mic there and see how well that works. Um, so I'm, I'm like the king of digressions, and I'm going to do another digression. When I said whichever one of your two ears is less shot, do you know that, that people who drive in, people who drive, which is a lot of people, and who drive on, in countries where you drive on the right side of the road, like in the U.S., most of Europe, except for England um, and other places, most of, most of us who drive on the right side of the road, our left ear after a few years, you know, by the time you're 30 or 40, is actually degraded relative to your right ear because you tend to drive sometimes with the window open or the noise of the road is more there and it just damages that ear. Wow. And people who drive in Australia, Japan, 
and uh, the UK and other countries where they drive on the wrong side of the road because it's not the right side of the road. It's going to be the wrong side of the road, right? That's right. Um, <laughs> and the ones who drive on the wrong side of the road, it's the other ear that gets damaged. Um, uh, and that, yeah. And that piece of knowledge, and like I said, $4.50 $4. will buy you a cappuccino. At your local. Well, and so many drummers at the hi-hat side and everything, you know, their mm-hmm. left ear is, is shot. But it's shot. Yeah, I like to damage both my ears at the same time. Yeah, just do it equally so that it all changes. Now, you also know, according to my extensive research, you can have completely damaged hearing in the two ears mechanically, and your brain compensates. And I've done tests on people that have really damaged hearing where one ear is totally different than the other, and they can still point to phantom imaging just like a person with normal hearing because the, the brain adapts. Wow. Which is really uh, good, good news. Um, but um, by the way, wear earplugs. Uh, you know, there's all these different great earplugs, you know, custom ear molds, turn it down 5 dB, 6 dB, 10 dB. But, you know, if you if you want to still want to be gigging when you're a little older, uh, protect your hearing. Yeah. Now, uh, let's talk about this. So this is a cover of our of the plant set we issued after we did all the geeky engineering, after we studied the room and said, OK, well, you know, the wave prop- propagation is going to do this. The rays are going to do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, we think we should put things over here. And that over here shows a kind of a one one direction of a 3D view of the room. Um, and, you know, there's your drum stool. Uh, there's your snare, your kick, your, your hat. And then there's these things uh, you put around the walls. And I'm going to assume that what you did followed this plan, right? You, oh, yeah. You, 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 cool. So... Um, there are two more views of the room. And the funny thing with these 3D views that are seen from the outside is it looks like the room is filled from top to bottom and left to right with panels. In reality, as you can see behind you, it's really not not close to that. It's just kind of an illusion. And we're probably only covering about 15 to 20% of the surface area of absorption and another about 10 or 15% with diffusion in specific locations. So. While, while we're on these two views, I'm going to point out that our what we have found works well in these small rooms for drums. This 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 is not this does not apply to a big room, but in a small room, first thing we like to do is to kind of deaden the center part of the room, and that's so that your overheads aren't too. I mean, in a in a room like yours with eight foot ceilings, the overheads are going to be close to the ceiling, and what, everything that's going up to the ceiling is going to splash back into the overheads and make them sound bad with that really close comb filter sound. It just is like a small room. So we like to deaden the middle of the ceiling and we like to diffuse the perimeter. So the sound that's going off that way, it, it gets a chance to kind of break up into small pieces um, and then come back to the mics after it's been diffused, been scattered, and sounds more like it would in a bigger room. Uh, bigger rooms that have much more travel time and much more surface uh, space uh, create a diffusion, sort of a reverb that sounds good on mics. Um, and by by heavily loading the perimeter of your ceiling with diffusers, uh, you kind of simulate that. Um, so that's very visible here. And then around the walls, uh, all the way around, we just have an alternator, alternation of absorbers and diffusers and absorber and diffusers of different patterns of diffusion to break it up a little bit. And, um, and then lower down on these lower panels here, and I'll, I'm going to go back through this, I'll explain. These are all various types of low frequency absorbers. People often call those bass traps and... I'm always a little, I bristle a little bit at the term traps because it sounds like it's like this giant thing that goes and and, traps the waves and that's not really how it works. Um, It's just various forms of panels, which is role is to absorb low frequency, which gets rid of standing waves and also balances out the low frequency reverb in the room. Um, So if I could briefly add to, to that, um, well, I have two questions for you. So on, on what, what Sonatus offers is a a, a deco trap, uh, and then a a deco sorber. Yeah. Uh, And I know you have pictures of, uh, you can, uh, and you can see over here, the deco sorber, uh, Mm -hmm. and has that pattern there. Uh, behind me is that uh, deco trap, and it has a similar pattern, but it's black. It's hard to see. But yeah. on that sur- on on that surface, so uh, is interesting. So uh, a good friend of mine, great engineer, songwriter, producer, he was asking about that hard surface, and I know you addressed this before. But so it's it's like a uh, almost like a wood paneling, but with with 
space in between into that soft thing. So what's the purpose of that as opposed to a bass trap that's, uh, or a deco trap that's like just soft? Yeah. So I will, ad I will address that two or three different ways. First of all, I like to think of our solutions in from really in the absorption as a as a three three way solution, kind of like you have a three way speaker where there's a woofer for the lows, a, mi a you know mid range for the mids, and a tweeter for the highs, right? And so when we are when we're treating these rooms, we look at it that way across the range of frequencies. The main absorbers, uh, which are where in your room? They're I mean they're all the way back over there. Uh, in in this room. Yeah. I'm pointing to the same kind of absorber as you have on your wall. We we call those the legato panels because they make everything legato. And there's a one here on the. There's two right here on this door. So the, those absorbers work uh, depending on the thickness. Uh, we have two different thicknesses, but let's just say that they work pretty much from about 300 hertz on up. So that's like the higher frequencies. The deco absorber which is about the same thickness of fuzz. Uh, we actually uh, use poly uh, high density polyester foam. Um, the deco absorber works from about 500 Hertz or 600 Hertz, depending on the model down to about 200 Hertz. So it kind of covers the next range of frequencies down. And then the deco trap works from hundred Hertz on down. So for, First part of that answer is it's like three ways. The deco traps are really made for the lower, lower, lower frequencies up to about 100 hertz. The deco absorbers are 100 to about three or 400, and then the the regular absorbers on the walls are 400 and up. I see. Now, um, there's there's more to it than that. Um, the deco the deco traps, which really are a diaphragmatic surface that's on a big chunk of foam, so it's a very damp diaphragm, are meant to go in the corners and their main role is to absorb standing waves, which, which is not just free floating reverb, but is actually energy, pressure energy going back and forth between two walls this way, two walls that way, ceiling and floor. And that's why we put them in the corner because it catches all three directions. Um, when they're in the corner, they're not doing anything in the middle of the wall. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're far away. Meanwhile, your drums are, are, you know, you're pounding at your drums and some sound is pounding off this wall, that wall, this wall. And if you don't have something to absorb bass there, um, you're going to end up with a really unbalanced tonal quality in your mix or in mm. your pickup. Then you're going to have to equalize it out to make it sound good. And you have to work right. more and work more and work more. Um, you mentioned uh, somebody said uh, something about saving time or what you, you you'll in, in the comments and yeah yeah if, yeah if you have a clean drum recording that you don't have to re-trigger later or or just like work like crazy through the EQ to make some room for other instruments because it's all nice and clean you can save time in your pre-mixing mixing and mastering um, so uh, all this to say that the deco absorbers are are designed to be put on the walls and catch the, the lower frequencies of the sound, not as low as the traps that are in the corners, but sort of in this mid-bass region. And the way they work is as, as opposed to a foam or fiberglass absorber where the energy goes in and, and through friction uh, uh, converts the acoustic energy into heat. That's how a, a regular fuzzy, you know, fibrous kind of material works. Instead of that, it's a, it's a diaphragm that receives the sound energy and actually compresses and expands the foam as a diaphragm. And that compression and expansion is what creates the conversion of acoustic energy out of the room. Now, wow. um, about the pattern, um, if, we were to, if we were to make those panels just a, a straight panel of wood, they would absorb only only very lows uh, because and they would reflect the highs by 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 cutting patterns on there with actually a laser cutter we do let some mids in and the pattern is actually pretty close so it's not a lot of highs it's it lets a little bit of mids in it spreads the bandwidth of the deco absorber to go up higher than if it was just a flat panel mm -hmm. plus it makes it look kind of pretty it does so, yeah yeah um, it's amazing so yeah, that's the that's the idea behind those. So it is a um, a membrane absorber, uh, not not a tympanic one that goes bing. It's it's more of a a uh, uh, really a damped membrane that's in front of a full coverage of, yeah. of dense polyester film. And I think it's important for for listeners who are drummers that are listening that are that are watching this that or or listening is that when 
a lot of us are recording drums and sending them off for an engineer to work with, uh, a producer to work with. And so they're going to put their own treatment, whether it's effects or this. So oftentimes we are just, we're there to perform and give them the, the raw tracks. And uh, so often, even on live gigs, when things are sounding good, tuned well, uh, recorded well, if it makes their job easier, then not only is a good performance desirable, but like, wow, you should call this this drummer because they've got their sounds dialed in and it's going to expedite your project. I mean, you, you, it's going to speed up the process and uh, right. save you time and money and all right. that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, I, I'm old enough. I mean, I mean, not look at it, but I'm old enough to remember when you actually got paid for doing drum gigs and everybody got paid. There's plenty of money going around the music industry. That ain't so anymore. And the, yeah. the, the person who's going to get the gigs is the one who can keep working at high efficiency and quickly. It's, re it's ridiculous what they'll pay you to mix a hit song today it's just it's like what people figured out a way to do it you have to be a contributor to that so that w the, what you're putting out is easy to drop into the rest of the track so right time right. is so, money yeah time is money definitely so uh these are some 3d views these are mo more 3d views but seen from inside the room in different different places and if we can, it'd be nice to pan your camera at the end of this and see how that all looked. But um, this, by the way, is the, is the work of our uh, genius plan uh, set uh, creator, Mario Previti, who actually uh, lives in your town, he lives in Nashville. We oh, do wow. all of our work by remote. And uh, he, he does, he helps me through the engineering and then does all of these layouts and then does these renderings. Uh, this is our, actually our mid grade of rendering um, for fun one day, maybe I'll have him create a photorealistic version of that, which you can actually see those on our website, on the Sonatus website. You'll see what it looks like when Mario really um, uh, geeks out completely and does these these photo-ready things where you go, is that, is that a real room or is <laughs> that a rendering? Right. I can't tell. It's like it's, yeah. he gets that good about it. Um, so Mario's a bass player. All, all of us here, by the way. Um, just trying to think. Yeah, all of all of us are musicians. Uh, I just I had to like think about this. Anybody who's you know everybody who works here has at some point in time you know banged around on some instrument uh, and made some money at it, and it's including Mario, who's a good bass player. Um, so uh, this these are four views of the room seen from four different directions. Here you can see on the top that you've got these absorber panels. Here they're shown in red. Just that's not the color of the fabric. It's just a it's just an icon. Yeah, so that's an you can panel. see. Yep, your, yours are white. And and uh, Matthew did this really cool thing, which is to put some uh, uh, LED tape backlighting on them. And it's very, very cool. I like it's, that. It's very all different. trying to inspire. The it's trying ambiance, to inspire. The ambiance is wonderful. Um, <laughs> so, um, all right. So we got some absorbers over here. And perimeter around that is various types of diffusers. And I'm not going to get too much in that. I think I covered that. Um, a few months ago, but they they have different patterns in how they re-radiate and we point them in different directions so that basically the sound is going up is what we're trying to do is is doesn't sound very good when I when I say it, but we're trying to cheese grate the big sound waves into small pieces so right. that it's more digestible. Yeah. Actually, that sounds good. It's, it's much more digestible. That it, is, it is. And, and you said you, you talked about the drums blooming. Yeah, you know, the sound and that that was a great descriptor. Yeah, I mean, that's what it does is as opposed to the the wavefront hitting the ceiling and coming back to the mic as, as an entity and they're competing with the direct sound, mm -hmm. it's broken into smaller pieces so that what gets back to the mic is diffused, it's bloomed out, it just sounds much more right, like right, a right, right. Okay, so, and then around the walls, these red things here are absorbers, here's absorbers, 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 and they're, they're basically scattered around the room. And uh, when you look at it from this side rather than outside, you'll see that it's, it's covering ultimately, you know, less than 20% of the wall surface. And then we're, we're interleaving different types of diffusers at different places to try again to, to, for the sound that's going out to the walls to get returned back to you and to the mics um, in, a, in a diffused way, in a scattered way that again, sounds like it's in a bigger room. I've been in, in a lot of studios that have big live rooms and they, they don't have this level of treatment. They just have space. They have square footage. Square mm -hmm. meters and square meters cost a lot. 
you got to heat them, you got to cool them, uh, you got to pay the rent, you got to pay the real estate, and you know no nobody can afford that anymore. And this one of the things about this whole trickery is it's a way to make a small room like your sound like a, a big live room. Yeah. Okay, so let's get a little bit more in detail about what's actually on those walls. This in our in our plant sets, we always have a, a page here that shows the symbol key uh, of the the cloud panels, the absorbers, the different, different types of diffusers. We have a what I call a three D diffuser called the big fuser. The sound hits it and gets scattered in the three dimensional hemisphere. We have two different types of two D diffusers where the sound that hits the panel is scattered back as a plane, which is why I call it two D. It's it's a uh, Incoming sound is one dimension, and then it scatters back out in 2D. So there's a thing called a four fuser and a thing called a sharp fuser. They have slightly different patterns. And then we have two more panels in your room, the, the deco zorber, which is, like I said, it's a, it's a chunk of foam uh, that's covered with a, with a membrane. Um, it's three inches thick. And then there's the, uh, the deco traps, which is yeah. a much deeper thing that goes into the corner. So uh, this is one wall. You know, the one to the, I'm going to say to the left of your drum stool, uh, you know, as, as you're sitting, you, you look to, I think it's looking to the left. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Right. It's Hold this on. one Maybe right over here. over here. Yeah. So that's the one with the single door, right? Um, so on that wall, uh, you can see there's, there's absorbers. Their role is to tame down the reflection energy in the room so it doesn't sound like an echo box. And then we have some four fuser diffusers. These scatter the sound on horizontally. Don't send too much of it up to the ceiling. Just keep it in the horizontal plane. Um, and there's a sharp fuser over here. And then in the corners here, there's a stack of our, uh, uh, what's called again, the deco traps, low frequency absorbers that go in the corners to cancel down or to absorb out the standing wave energy in the room. And then at height, of the kick drum and the lower toms, there is a, a low frequency, a, a mid bass to low frequency absorber called the deco zorber. Um, so that's one wall. This is another wall. Uh, we had you put two diffusers on the door. I hope that wasn't too much of a hassle. Sometimes the diffusers are a bit big and you open and close the door, they're a hassle. But how, how did that turn out for you? You know, uh, so uh, six of, the, of these particular, uh, what are they, the square? The, the four fusers, yeah. Four fusers uh, had what you guys provided uh, with the, the magnet on the back. Yeah. So what I did is I decided to use two of those on the door, that door. Uh, yeah. So because that is a common door coming in and out of this room uh, from another space. Right. And so if when I'm not using the room for a long period of time, I can take that down and protect that. Right. Yeah, that's so that's an idea. option. Well, and 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 you know, not to not to jump too far ahead, but I mean, mounting options, I think, it is more important than I realize. So you know, there's uh, some of these on the ceilings that have uh, the magnet and stuff, but I was just able to use some some uh, you know, improvise a little bit to be able to have something metallic there for them to grab onto. So right. on that door, I uh, in, in sound isolation, I ended up replacing a couple doors with some uh, he heavy, excuse me, heavy solid core doors uh, to help with the sound between the rooms. But also uh, with the mounting, I ended up using uh, some Velcro, like the 3M that you put on. You can get these heavy duty ones at Lowe's. Right. And, and then if you needed, if, if you were changing rooms at all, you I mean, you could take the whole thing down and take it off your wall. But uh, I have another one on a door that if I wanted to, I could, t and I've done this before, like I'll take down a couple of those things on that door and then put it back up. And so the Velcro, it, I believe it's the, the 3M has that. Right. The, what's called command adhesive from 3M. That stuff's amazing. Yeah. You put that, it on the wall and then you can just, peel it back, you know, with this little tab and it pops right off. So, so yeah, everything, the, everything with the exception of the clouds that are hanging, um, you know, and the couple of the, the, the gray ones that are magnetized, it's, and of course the, the, the deco traps that are sitting on the floor, everything mm -hmm. is Velcroed. Oh, uh, you know, the, uh, I guess I have to say the um, big fusers, mm -hmm. 
uh, ha- they had something on the back that I was able to to mount something on the wall and hang them almost like a picture. Right. Yeah, they come with a little wood plate. Um, so we, I, on the mounting, we we have this optional uh, magnetic kit that that you're talking about, Matt here, which is four magnets that get get uh, hot glued actually to the back of the panels, and then four fender washers that are countersunk that you put at the locations on the wall, and you can click the panel on the wall. It's great. And right? It's great. It's an easy way to do it, but also in a room like this where you're, you're recording tracks, you can actually change things around. So maybe there's a different drum tone to be had by moving the absorbers and diffusers around, getting rid of all the absorbers, getting rid of the diffusers, wh- whatever um, whatever style you're trying to get to acoustically, you can now make – not only do you have a room that's treated acoustically, but you have variable acoustics, man. You got to pay a lot of money for that. Normally. Well, I I want to I want to make sure that we address that. That's really I, I think it's really important for drummers that I mean we have multiple snare drums uh, to choose from, cymbals. Uh, a lot of us have multiple drum sets to choose from, right. and uh, it's. I mean, why do, why do we do this? Is it, do we just like to spend money. No, because you you somewhat you, yeah. You, you're not only getting hired, and we talk about this on the podcast a lot. You're not only getting hired to to perform. You're also getting hired to come up with a part that works for the song. Right. To use your drummer brain to to orchestrate what needs to happen, and then on top of that, you're also asked to think sonically what is going to work. Is this going to be a really dry snare drum, uh, really washy, big fat hi-hats, you know, all these things. Do I take, uh, you know, do I find the right padding? Do, is, is the kicker 4.0 in my kick drum, is that going to be the right thing for, you know, all these things that, and, and what kind of room. And now if I can record here, um, so I'll, I'll do stuff. It could be uh, today I have to do like a pop track and the reference tracks that I was given are these really modern tracks. Mm-hmm. And then the next track I'm doing, uh, somebody wants a straight up George Strait Texas shuffle. Mm-hmm. And the modern track, I need some room. I need some room. Uh, the country track, I want, I'm not moving anything. It's going right. to be, I need, I need kind of this uh, late 80s drum room sound. Right. Now, you you could actually take the room to completely dead if you wanted to by getting more absorbers from us. Right now you have a a mix, about 50-50 absorbers and diffusers. Um, but if you had more absorbers, you could take down diffusers from selected locations and put more absorption up and end up with an even drier, punchier t- tone, which right. may not sound right, right in your original recording, but may help the mixer in starting up with something that's more dead. And then they, they can be the ones to liven it up however they want. Every, every session's a little different that way. So, um, anyway, all, all that's to say, that's why we have these magnetic install kits yep. so you can, you can move things around. It's also easier to install, but, it, I but think it's being a, able to be flexible is really cool. That's a really appealing thing. I think uh, that uh, I want, I just love for people to know that just to be able yeah. to kind of tune and have this flexibility right. to, yeah. Cool. Well, let's go back to, uh, this, this, these walls. So again, uh, bd, 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 bd. So just, I'm going to go back to this drawing to like remember where we are. So uh, looking at it from the drummer's perspective, from the drum stool perspective, this over here is your left wall. And then I'm going to, I'm going to call this the wall that's in front of you. I mean, call it the front wall. So we looked at the left wall. We looked at the front wall, two diffusers on the door, absorbers around it, some, lo- some of these deco absorbers. So like mid bass absorbers down lower um, and then the uh, deco traps in the corners and then this is the this is the wall that's over to your right um i'm trying to place it relative to your picture i do you, do you have your actually raise your right arm and say i i do well, <laughs> <laughs> so so what i do so this is my right arm so this okay. this what you're showing here because of this the space that i have here right the drums the drums are a little, just a little slightly different than the picture. Okay. 
Um, so that wall that you're looking at in the graphic is kind of to the right as yeah. I'm sitting as a, so this is my left arm, but it, but as I'm sitting at the kit, it would be to my right. So okay. ride, ride symbol, floor Tom, but it's slightly turned away. So my back is a little bit to it. It's at an angle. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. So you, you turn, you rotate a little bit. So, so this is the other wall. Um, Absorbers, diffusers. We here up high. We introduced a 3D diffuser, so yeah, that yeah. the um, the upper area of the symbols, you know, the stuff that's up a little higher, has something to bounce off and go up to the ceiling and kind of scatter around in the room. Um, and that's really what you want to try to do with the things that are a little bit up higher, is to bring it back to the ceiling, uh, so that you can get a little bit of ambience from the far far edges of the room. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is the final wall. Again, some absorbers, some diffusers, uh, two different types, the, the 2D types, which are stripes this way that scatter the sound in the other direction. I know it may seem counterintuitive that when you have stripes this way, the sound scatters that way. But just think of it as, a, uh, let's go back to a cheese grater. If you had a cheese grater, if you point it this way to your cheese, you won't be grating your cheese. It needs to be that way so that it grates your cheese. Interesting. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> let me ask you let me uh, on the picture before you had uh the deco trap up high yeah you can yeah. see that so uh yeah. you explained kind of this the low frequency and how it just it was it was handling some of the low frequency of the floor tom the kick drum so what was the point of that up there on that far end of the room well, my dear, it's very scientific. There was not enough room between this deco trap and your door frame to put a deco zorber there. <laughs> we it. call that opportunity acoustics, which is like, you know, you start with a plan and then you go, well, where can I fit stuff? Okay. And then you go, oh, it can't fit here. And rather than slice it, you know, we're just putting it up, up high. It also covers this little zone. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and there it is. Thanks for asking. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, and so this is, let's see, where were we? So then this is the, the final wall that we didn't talk about yet, but, but uh, you know, some, some uh, vertically striped 2D diffusers where the sound scatters back out on the horizontal plane. Mm -hmm. And then a 3D diffuser up here. So the sound that hits it gets scattered hemispherically. Um, and then this is the ceiling view, just what's called a reflected ceiling plan, absorbers in the middle and in a scatter, a smattering of diffusers, which you could either use 2D diffusers turned around as you go around with 3D diffusers, depending on how much room you have. Um, our our uh, big diffusers are about six and a half inches deep. And when you have a, a ceiling that's only eight feet tall, that starts to feel like, man, you're really encroaching. So we sometimes go back to the slightly shallower 2D diffusers like we did in your room. Yeah, yeah, so, that was nice. Um, yeah, man, this is a list of everything that was in there. Um, yeah. So, um, so that's what we did. And, you know, the, again, the, the, the prevailing uh, vision for what we're trying to do is the sound of your drums go, goes out and hits the walls, hits the ceiling. The middle of the ceiling is absorbed so it doesn't come right back into your overheads. The, uh, the perimeter of it is scattered so that the sound that goes over that way can bloom around a little bit. The upper areas of the room are generally diffused. And then from, from about six feet down, there's some absorption and some low frequency absorption. And in, in the corners, we put the, the deco traps for, you know, deep bass absorption. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then th that's what we did. So did it work? Yeah. Uh, did, did, yeah. For, well, for, for, first question actually is on the opportunity side. Did we get all the dimensions right where everything fit, where we thought it would fit? That's, that's not always obvious. That, you know, there's a couple uh, places in my ceiling where it there's an angle, uh, right. but I think for the most part uh, that was handled nicely. On on the room, uh, the what we're calling the front room, where there was three things, uh, there there was enough space for all three. The the yep. uh, absorbers. Um, I'm looking at your uh, the, the the legato eight and uh, and the deco trap two of those absorbers and then the deco trap they kind of had to be almost stacked one right on top of the right. other uh, that's right. the only spot um, there's a because couple of things that in, sort of that, that angled soffit you have behind you there right? yes yeah um, but otherwise and I know that we were dealing with a lot of doors in in this but um, no, it, 
in the video that we're that we have put in this video that we're that we're recording now uh that, that will be placed you 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 can hear the difference uh again as we explained before all things being the same apples to apples you can really hear the difference <laughs> So I will tell you, when I first did that, AB, and I sent you a link to that video yeah. before we put that out, I think we posted that yesterday, and that will be a part of this video. Uh, I sent that to a friend of mine who's got really great ears and has his own studio. Uh, and he, his, his response was, I listened twice to your video on my computer. He wanted to make sure he got home and just didn't put it on his phone. Uh, through my studio monitors, the thing I noticed both times that I wasn't focused on notice the second, it, it, it basically he said it jumped out at him again how much more focused the low end is mm. in the treated room. Mm. Uh, and this is a guy whose main instrument is bass. He's all about low end. But he said mm. how focused that low end was. And I think that ties in to one of the comments we got about – mixing on the back end um yeah. a couple of the things i will tell you from the the few uh, tracks i've been able to do since since everything's been installed is the isolation between uh drums how how uh i'm getting less bleed from the tom right. mics into the snare mics which right. is always an issue or the hi-hat mic going into the snare mic so the drums speak individually in a stronger way right so uh, you know you, uh, i think another thing for drummers to consider is uh you know one comment the guy said hey i love it it sounds great there's the before that there was something there was a character of the room before that i thought was really cool well yeah mm -hmm. of course because you're hearing this echoey drums by themselves when i did a post where it was just drums by themselves but you always have to consider where is it going to lay in the mix? Where, how, in context of drums sitting within the context of a song, you can eke, you you can create this big, huge drum sound. But then the the engineer or whoever's going to be like, "That's great," but we're recording more than drums, you know. Yeah, this is this is not a drum album, um, so. My original business partner in, in the company, MS Star Acoustics, is a um, guy called Keith Olson, um, incredibly well-known, six-time Grammy Award-winning uh, engineer and producer. He passed away last year, unfortunately, hmm. um, and did, just look him up, did, did amazing work, you know, lots and lots and lots of gold and platinum albums. And I got to hear in his studio a bunch of really famous songs that we've all heard a bazillion times in which you solo up the guitar, you solo up the snare, you solo up the instruments. And on the, you know, on his recordings, he was he, like, Keith was like really famous for getting a big sound out of anything, whether it was country, pop, rock, and, you know, and then you solo up the thing with no effects, nothing. And it just sounds like clank, 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 like, man that's a that's a horrible guitar tone or that bass guitar just sounds like there's no and it's like that's what you need yeah I, you know i need it like i need it to all take its own room so i can lay it in the places i can lay it and then build the whole castle on top and let me do the big and yeah. that's a mistake we musicians always you know I, I like most guitarists have spent 20 years of my guitar life getting that tone you know combinations of amps and cabinets and effects and all of the you know, guitar. I got a whole collection of guitars, two out of the three I have over here to get the tone. And you realize right. in the end, the, the person who wants to mix, I almost said the guy, the, the, the man or the woman that wants to mix in the end just <laughs> needs things that they can actually segment out and put in the mix. And sometimes it's just gotta be simple, dry, uh, clunky, just play the right notes play them in the right time, don't take up too much room, let them deal with, you know, how to, how to expand it into the mix. Um, and so with drums, if yeah. you're, if you're doing it, I'm repeating myself, but if you're doing a drum track that's really big and really verby and like sounds great on its own, 
uh, there's no room for anybody else. And so that's one yeah. of the benefits of trying to dry it down a little bit, not not kill it. I, I'm not an advocate of soup, you know, of electronic sounding drums in the end, if you if you totally kill it, but just take up less room in your individual tracks and let let the next person down the line do the job they have to do to to pack it all right. It reminds me of a former guest that we had, Grady Saxman, who's a, is a great producer and drummer himself, and, and he described the sonic space as a sandbox and there's only so much room and so every time yeah. you introduce something new to the mix that's taking up sonic space uh if your bass drum is f is falling in the exact same frequency as the low end keyboard or bass guitar something's got to give and so yeah. we talk about uh, the punch of the kick drum and then the subwoofer on the outside or the outside kick drum so you've got the, the first punch, the first part of the note, and then the last part of the note, and the combination of the two is what gives you that. They're, each one is playing a role. So again, we're, right. we're like introducing different parts of all, the, the ensemble, if you will, is each playing a role to make this large, beautiful sound like you were, like you were talking about the engineer, mm -hmm. you know, like this is small, but put piece together, you have a, a picture. Oh, it's all good. It's all yeah, good. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, um, of course we're, we're ultimately, uh, the working drummer is putting, you know, the, the, the output of the working drum is, is tracks, you know, microphones have picked up the sound and, as I heard in your demo, it just sounded so, it just sounded so much nicer, you know, whatever, we can put all kinds of words on it, but the track after just was a, um, it, yeah, it didn't have the room around it, didn't have all that kind of fun stuff about it, but it's just a, it just sounded like much better drums. But what about for you as a, as a, as a drummer, just playing there, just <clears> in the room, <throat> listening to the drums, um, Ignoring mics, just going, I'm just playing, just having a good time. What did you, did you notice anything? Was it yeah. apparent to you? Yeah, I, I, it definitely. Uh, again, I, I think there are some frequencies that can, can wear you out. And so it, mm. it, it, when I'm taking the time to uh, work out a part or run down a track a few times, or even just sitting in without my in-ears in or my headphones on and kind of listening to the tones that I'm introducing to the room, different snare drums, different cymbals. I'm not, I'm not exhausted. Um, right. if I, if I have time to work on things and I want to spend some time in the room, touch and tone is a part of what drummers should be practicing. So there are times that I, I practice without my headphones, without my in-ears, some ear protection, but it's not all going through some sort of processor. It's, mm -hmm. I'm really trying to relate with the drums so I know what I'm doing. That, that, is, a, that is a new challenge. As in, in the 21st century, drummers are all used to reusing in-ears or having some sort of sound that they're going through and we 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 lose touch with with our our touch and our our feel mm -hmm. with the drums mm -hmm. so we need to take time with that and if i'm in that big echoey room that you hear in the demo the before boy the my practice sessions would not last very long um uh, mm -hmm. i now i can tell you um i wasn't when i had everything under construction and i had i have a carpet here this is like a not a carpet but a um an area rug mm -hmm. I had that rolled up out of the way. I was painting the rooms. I was adding a second layer with green glue on two of the walls. I was doing serious construction. I had drums in another room. My son was homeschooling in another room mm -hmm. between us. And it was like an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And he said, Dad, do you have the doors open? I said, no. He goes, because it is so loud. Mm -hmm. Like the room was, was amplifying. Yeah the space two doors so not only does is it more pleasant for me in here but it also a uh, buddy of mine came over i stepped outside to hear you can hear a, a db or two lower in mm -hmm. volume and more my neighbors like that you know right and my family does yeah it's it's hard to know on a straight sound level what uh, you know, if, if you could measure the before and after of the sound pressure level of you playing the drums right outside that door to your neighbors, 
you'd probably only measure with you know with a with a a sound level meter. They don't have needles anymore. They have you know me meters that display digital bits. But you probably will sound very you'll show very little difference in the sound level because this stuff is not it's not really cutting down so much of the sound level that goes out. But the sound character mm. is going to be a lot less bothersome. So it, for one, when you're inside a room and and whether you're listening to music over speakers or, or hitting an instrument, uh, playing an instrument, uh, echoey sound that's bouncing around is is disturbing for the brain because your brain's going, where is it? Where is it coming from? It's like it's like being slapped repeatedly this way um, in your psychoacoustic system. It's like, ah. Um, and so if you actually looked inside the room before and after your treatment, you may you may find a reduction of sound level of, I don't know, three to four decibels before and after. Wow. And that's not really that much. That's like, you know, you know what 3 dB on the fader is. It's a little bit. It's not a very big deal. It happens to be twice the power if it was an amplifier driving a speaker, but it's not that big of a deal in sound level. But the character of the sound going from echoey and, re echoey and reverberant to damped and, and easy to listen to is so much more, is so much less annoying. I was going to say more pleasant. Less annoying is the, is the term. And so you can be in there longer before you have any listening fatigue. By the same token, if you think of the sound bouncing around an echoey room and leaking out the door to your neighbors, there's just so much more character to that reverberant sound that makes it annoying than if it's deadened out. Mm -hmm. And so even though on a sound level meter, you may not really see much of a difference, the perception of the, the annoyance of that is way reduced after you damp it. And there is not really any clear measurement method you can use. You could measure with impulse responses, but it, it, this, this aspect hasn't really been studied. I, I, you know, there, there are some journal uh, articles that talk about the influence of the reverb and um, perception of loudness on that, but it, it's, it's not definitive. It's not like measuring a decibels with a good sound level meter where you can go, I see the number, uh, but it, it's just less annoying and we'll just call it the annoyance factor. Yeah. Same thing in a restaurant. If you're in a place that's booming and it's all high ceilings, hard surfaces, everything, you measure the level, it may be 75 or 80 dB, which is not quiet, but it's not crazy loud. It's, it's really annoying. You can't hold a conversation and that's because you're, your brain's bothered by all the sound that's bouncing around and bouncing around. And then if that restaurant happens to hire somebody to put up some kind of acoustical treatment and, and tamper, you know, tamp it down, damp, damp it down, you may see a reduction of three or four decibels of sound level, but suddenly it's just comfortable to be in. And you yeah. can actually hold a conversation, even though there's noise going on uh, and it's perfectly comfortable. So um, that, that part is, it's a, just a little harder to measure and explain you do hear it well with a single ear by the way because you don't you don't have echo canceling when you don't you don't have binaural hearing but um i would say that your neighbors uh whether you get along with them or not we do are, yeah 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 they're great oh, good. it's good to have neighbors that you like when you are banging yeah. away at drums <laughs> um they they're most probably going to have something that's less annoying coming out your door over there um yeah so, yeah Cool. No, it just it just it just helps everything, and 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 you know, uh, in addition to that, uh, one thing that we were discussing briefly that I think is important in this kind of modern era of social media and uh, the way we uh, meet new people and 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 work with more people is that people are seeing things on social media. They're seeing things. So, uh, oftentimes, if you see a video. It may be great sounding, but you, you you don't even want to click on it where sometimes there's a visual aspect of it that mm. if you're able to present something and, and the things that you guys provide, uh, it just like, wow, this looks great. I have to click on this to make sure I can hear the sound. So yeah. if you know if you're doing drum covers, uh, if you're trying to grow your YouTube channel, you know, however you're utilizing your space. Um, in creating music in whatever fashion, uh, lighting, you know, the video, all these people invest in these things, camera, lighting, you know, mm -hmm. your backdrop, your, you know, everything like that. It, it, it could be amazing sounding, but you just need to draw somebody in. If you're somebody like me that doesn't have a name 
uh, the, the, of, of, you know, a famous drummer with, you know, a big name that of course, doesn't matter where they are, you're going to click on them because you're going to want to hear what they're doing. But right. if you're somebody like me that, that you don't know who they are and you're trying to attract clients or attract more people to work with, sometimes yeah. having something that looks good is there. So that's uh, long winded that yeah. this, this looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it does have to look good. You know, the better studios out there always had really amazing, uh, I, I use the word had, have. <laughs> I'm just, you know why I'm saying had. I mean, uh, unfortunately, a lot of these really, really cool places have been shuttering because the business has changed. But um, the the vibe and the, the interior architecture was really important so that it just felt good to be in take pictures in there and it's compelling. And so it, it does have to look good, even though the look doesn't logically affect what you're hearing. We, we do listen with our eyes. Yes. Um, so, yes. you know, what, what's behind me, this is our little music room and listening room. Uh, you're seeing some speakers that are part of an, uh, an immersive audio environment for uh, Dolby Atmos type um, uh, music and film over, over in this direction is the screen. Um, but the the stuff that's over here is all made to look good on the wall. It's yeah, you know, it's expensively made with solid wood, and so that so that it's it's compelling. Because people, like you said, they they do if they see something cool, they're gonna go, oh, what's over here? And they're gonna click and and want to listen. Um, so, I've been I've been fooled by uh, by what I see. Um, there's a there's a company out there. It'll go un, unnamed that. As a, as a rule, any prototype product they make, they always paint as this bright uh, yellow orange so that the product never ends up getting put in a box and shipped to a customer. This is our reference prototype. Don't ship this. So they paint it orange, red, yellow, and then the production ones are black. And one day I was doing a listening test, doing a product development session when I worked at Lucasfilm, and I was listening to the yellow orange one, and it was like, Man, that thing sounds mid-rangey and blah blah blah. Um, and comparing to the the production version, the black one sounded really good, but the yellow one is like something something went wrong here. And then it was like, okay, well, let's hide this behind the scrim cloth that we always used in our blind A/B comparisons. And suddenly the two speakers just sound exactly the same. So <laughs> I was fooled that the the yellow looking speaker was mid-rangey and hardy and all that. It's like. <laughs> No, so your eyes do influence what's going and hitting your brain just the same way as your ear does. Yeah. So just know that for your rooms, if you if you want a place where your clients are coming to or that you're doing stuff that's going to end up visually, it, it's got to look cool. Well, as things start to open up, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've got uh, in Nashville, you can't throw a rock without hitting a, another musician, but I have a friend of mine I've worked with a few times. I'm trying to talk into... Uh, doing a full production of a record. So, you know, it's not him sending me tracks. It's him coming to this space. Right. He lives in a small condo. He's a great guitar player, great songwriter. No, you, I'm go like, if this happens, guess what? He's going to be here. Right. We're going to use some of these rooms for isolation. We're and we're going to. Be, he's going to be creating here. We're going to be producing and arranging here. And and it's like I want this space to be a space where he can feel comfortable and create, right. you know, we may right. have to put a couch where these drums are, but uh, still when we're listening, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he's a guitarist. Just give him a stool. It'll be fine. It'd be fine. And, and, and so uh, we also talked about, um, I'm going to do like a mini document documentary of, 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 of this space and uh, the room, uh, the, the arrival of things, uh, us pulling things out of the boxes, and then uh, the before and after. So, so there's going to be links uh, we're going to be able to provide so people can watch that and kind of see that. But it's been, a, it's been an amazing experience. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, to, and, and I'm looking forward to the, the, the many options that I've got to kind of experiment and really learn my room as much as I've learned what my snare drum, this snare drum or that snare drum does, or right. this drum set does, uh, so that I can be more competitive and, and provide something uh, to, to just about anybody, you know? Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I look forward to hearing your recordings. Um, yeah. And, you know, you guys li listen into the, the before and after recording. It, it, it stunned me, actually. I was like, wow, this stuff works. <laughs> yeah. 
again, I mean, it just, it, it, everything being the same, apples and apples, man. Amazing. Right. Amazing. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's, what's the next step? Uh, what is the next step? <laughs> Well, you know, start start to record a whole bunch of tracks, play play around with the the, uh, the locations of all those things, you know, because they they will change your tone a little bit. I'd love to hear what you what you did notice. Hey, you know, when I moved these diffusers here or there, and I did this thing and that thing, you know, here's what changed. Um, of course, for of this course. this kind of track, uh, you know, I, I like a layout that way. I like to turn the diffusers in this other direction. Um, you know, just I mean, ultimately, you're you're deflecting and reorienting how the sound is bouncing in the in the room, and coming back to um, coming back to your mics, and uh, it it you know it'd be fun to to hear your experiments with all that. Well, and knowing what each one of these does and why they do what they do, it, it I have a little more education on. Okay, this is going to be absorbing within these this frequency range and this. Fre so I want to control this frequency range and let this frequency let range. Boy, that's hard to say. Uh, you know, it, over. So if I, I need more highs, I'm I'm taking down some of these the diffusers the. Um, the legato, these these softer diffusers. I want more high end. If I want to control, you know, if I want to open up the low end, I may, you know, arrange the deco fusers or something like that. So, right. yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be. Uh, no, there's there's just so much to work with. It's 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 amazing. Um, right, and and sometimes you, things will be actually counterintuitive. There's cases where uh, reducing the amount of uh, of absorption will actually dull out your room. It's, it's oh, like, wow. what? Well, because uh, the, the, as, as you reduce, uh, oh, as you increase the path length of how the sound bounces around the room, yeah, um, you end up with more energy in the microphone that's gone more miles, if you want to think of it that way. And every time it bounces off the wall, it loses some highs. As it travels through air, the highs get um, uh, absorbed more than the mids and lows. Oh, interesting. And so as, as you liven up the room, you can actually in some cases it have it a little bit brighter, but may, very often less bright and kind of a little thicker. And that may be the right thing for a certain type of recording. Um, so, you know, experiment and see, see what happens. Cause, right. uh, cause yeah. it may match what you're trying to do better. Um, the only way to find out is to, is to try it. Yeah. Well, the, the, the high, it's interesting you say that the hi hats seem to be brighter in this room than they were yeah. before, which, which yeah. surprised me, but yeah, right. no. Yeah. But we're all with, and, and within our conversation, if you'll go back, we're speaking in the future here. Uh, yeah. There's going to be some of those examples that we're going to edit in to that. And um, yeah. And links down below for Sonatus uh, USA. Uh, and then uh, we have the, you guys have this, uh, we've talked about many times the kicker 4.0. Right. I'll, I'll go ahead and put this on the screen if I may. If Please. it will let me do it. <laughs> Please do. So this is my contact info. I'm Anthony Gramani. Uh, you know, here's uh, here's my email address, phone number. And then these are the websites for the things we do. The the one uh, PMI Engineering is, is an uh, engineering consulting company that focuses on acoustics, audio, video, stuff like that. So if you want help with Hey, I got a room. What do I do with this? It sounds this way and that way. Can you help me? We, we can consult on that. Sonatus, which is the materials you've got around your room. Uh, there's the website, sonatususa.com. We also make a line of very novel loudspeakers that we can talk about at some, please not today, some other time. <laughs> you can go see it under germani.tv. It really is, um, actually the speakers were designed by our chief engineer, uh, Manny Lacaruba, who... Uh, at some point in his career was the chief engineer of the the plant in Sausalito, very famous uh, recording studio that's, I forget what the numbers, but like 42 of the, you know, world's top rock albums were recorded there. Um, and that's, that's what he did. And so in, in his time there, he, he developed some ideas for how to make a better, uh, actually originally mastering speaker and then studio monitor. And we now have launched a line of speakers that uh, follow those practices using really good waveguides, active this and properly done crossovers and all, all this really cool stuff. So here's the websites you can go look at. Um, 
And, you know, feel free to call, feel free to email if you've got any questions or need any help, any clarifications. And we'll have hyperlinks uh, to this as well. If you're just, uh, you know, hunting and poking, want to click on something, those hyperlinks will be available to, to get you, uh, if not in the exact spot, really, really darn close Easy to there. reach out to somebody. Those are uh, some examples of the speakers we're making. This is our, our smallest speaker. Wow. Um, two-way active is actually two amplifiers that drive the spin. Well, I'm trying to point to it. Oh, it's hard. That's my bass guitar. Um, so that's a that's a waveguide. That's a tweeter coupled into waveguide. It's actually pointing up and scattering the sound uh, in the in the right pattern to be really yeah. smooth in the room. Um, all of that is important for sound quality, but it's sort of the analogous on playback of what you're doing with your drums and how it's blooming into the room and sounding good on your mics. It's sort of the, the, the next level upon playback. And, you know, when you've got your monitors in front of you and you're listening to that, you, you do want to hear reality. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do a quick other digression, uh, not talk about cheese grating. I'm going to talk about monitors. Um, just for a second. Sure. Everybody's gotten used to today to be at a desk with, you know, speakers that are at arm's length, you know, four feet, five feet from you. That's just how we do stuff, right? And in the end, nobody in the world listens that way. Uh, unless they're sitting at a computer at a desk with their computers just with background music. You know, listening is done with speakers at 12, 13, 14 feet away. You know, you're sitting yeah. on the couch you're listening to speakers. And so then you have to learn how to translate what's coming in the near field from these quote unquote near field monitors. Monitor doesn't know if it's near field or not near field, by the way. It's just that they're so close to you, you're listening to basically an anechoic response. Meanwhile, your listener, your, your audience is listening in a reverberant field because we're 12 feet away. Um, and so everybody's gotten used to doing that and, and it is what it is. I, I contend that if you actually have a little space available, if you, if you can actually make the space to get away from the wall, you know, put, push your mix position away and get your speakers back at least 10 to 12 feet away from where you are and listen to them in, an, in a space that's, an, that's treated like yours, you mm -hmm. will hear reality more. And yeah. it'll take less time to mess with the mix and have it translate. Oh, so if you can yeah. actually set up, like your, your room, is, it's not completely ideally set up for very reference mastering and, or, or mixing, it's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. And if you can set up some monitors that have decent dispersion and tune them right for the room and listen a little bit further than just like right there in your face. Yeah. Uh, for one, you'll stop obsessing over little shit that nobody hears. Pardon the four letter word. But <laughs> we've all done it. We, it's like, man, there's a little click. It's like, and finally, when it's playing on somebody's car or in their home, you don't, it's gone. So stop yeah. obsessing over that. That's one of the things I notice in listening to the recordings of this, the stems and tracks that Keith Olson showed me is how much crap was in those recordings that we never, ever cared about. Right, we just didn't, right, right. It's like, it's fine. It's lost in the fine. Don't obsess over it. Um, and, but then also by, by getting a little further away, your entire sound stage, how you're layering the direct, the direct sounds to the reverb, all, all your plate simulations, all that stuff. It's, you will hear more what it sounds like when you go listen to it in the living room, in the car and stuff like that. So, Nothing to do with drums, just to do with acoustics and, and the perception of speakers and rooms. Just try to try to get away from, from those those well, Yeah, and, and and well, drummers are being called more and more to to engineer and, and oftentimes we're we're just asked to record and, and send those off. But I've done work for people that they say, you know, look, I, I don't want to mess with the stems. I don't want to mess with ten tracks. If you could just mix it down to a stereo track uh that i can just throw in my daw um you know i i trust you to mix the drums however you want add the compression add whatever reverb and then i'm just going to throw it in there that's just at its base model but uh that's 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 a part of it that's that's a very real part of what drummers need to do right. uh, is 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 play engineer play mixer and 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 do that Right. So that that's an important point. And my speakers are right here. <laughs> you can touch them. <laughs> well, almost, almost this far. Yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. And and now everything's moved out. You know. So, but, but this has been this has been amazing, uh, Anthony. And 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 I I want to I want to a shout out to Andrew Calvo uh, for his connection uh, with us and and the kindness that you guys have shown our podcast. 
Well, it's it's been fun. Thanks for the exposure. Uh, thanks for yeah. for trusting us, I guess, because you've invested a lot in your room. And you know, who are we? A bunch of, of geeks over here in California going, oh, do this, do that. And I'm, I'm glad it worked out. Well, we're, um, we're the feelings mutual. We're all, you know, trying to rise together. So cool. I'm, um, while we were talking about speakers, Ooh. I'm also going to show you this. So this is a version nice. of that thing that's behind uh, there. Yeah, uh, but that's built as I would call it a midfield monitor. Uh, again, the speaker doesn't know if it's midfield or not. But this is a speaker that if you could put it on a set of stands or something about eight, 10 feet away from you, 12 feet of you, it's going to in your in your room, it will play more than loud enough to produce the sound pressure, you know, more than, than what you'd want to hear because it's active and very efficient. Um, and those kinds of things are very, very cool. And couple that with the proper acoustics and the proper tuning and you end up being able to, there is no reason why if you, if you don't do things correctly acoustically, you couldn't just produce the next hit album right in that room. It doesn't, well, you know, it's, it's sad to say because I loved working in big studios. They're just not economically there anymore. And there's no reason why you couldn't get really close to that in a, um, in a project studio environment. I'm really tempted. I've got an extra space here to, put a turntable in and then while I'm doing work or doing rearranging drums or moving cymbals around, put a record on. It just, it, that's the, when I was, when I had everything out of here and was, was putting things back and putting, putting my desk back and everything. The first thing I did is put some music on and I'm like, Oh, it was, it was amazing. So yeah, Whoa. drum wise, but just music wise, this room is, 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 is amazing. Uh, we didn't even talk about that, but I mean, that, that's probably uh, enough said. I mean, geez, you know, just to play something on your speakers in a room like this is, uh, is amazing. Right. It's a game changer. Right. Well, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. I would expect that what's coming off speakers is going to sound, uh, sound better. Again, the, the, the layout of things, is really optimized for your drum kit in the middle of the room. And it would be a slightly different layout for uh, reference grade mixing. We can talk about that. And mm -hmm. because it's all magnetic, you can go, okay, well, I'm just going to move it around for this yeah. application. I know we, do, we did to cover that a little bit in the sound treatment, just as far as, you know, yeah. where to put things. And you guys had some schematics on what's right. going to work well for a mixing room. Right. Uh, so mm -hmm. we can, I encourage people to, to uh, episode one, sound treatment, episode two, sound isolation, which is really amazing. Well, Matt, I look forward to hearing your continue, the results of your continuing experiments. And, and uh, this is fun. Yeah, super great. Anthony, thank you so much, man. Uh, we're going to hit stop here, but I just want to say thank you so much and uh, more information and just just more things uh, for everyone to, to listen to and digest. So uh, from Sonatus USA, we, we, we so appreciate it. Great. Same here. Take care. All right. Take care.